And we'd like to welcome in from team number 8728, Argonauts. It's our rookie team here on the Open Alliance Show. Nathan, welcome and uh, delighted to have you in here coming in from Troy, Michigan. Thank you. Um, so my name is Nathan. We're a rookie team, FRC 8728, uh, Argonauts from Troy Athens High School. We're extremely excited to be joining the Open Alliance for a rookie season. Our partners can be found on our website, frcargonauts.org, or on our team's social media, at Troy Argonauts. Perfect. We're looking at uh, uh, excited to see more about that and, and talking to you uh, as you go through uh, this season so far. So uh, tell us, as you know, as, as your first year coming in, as a team's first year coming in, uh, you know, you don't obviously have some of the background that, that many of us have been in here for way too long of this program. Uh, so we're excited to hear about how you're approaching Rapid React uh, and approaching uh, first in general as well, too. Can you can give us a little background on kind of how it started out for your team and, and let's work our way up to week three then. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, supported by Striker Careers. Striker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Yeah, we started in last spring. We decided to create a new team in Troy. Um, and we got a, uh, a huge space at our high school. Personally, I have a lot of, I have a couple of years of FTC and FRC experience. Sure. Um, but not too many students on our team. A lot of students on our team are underclassmen, freshmen, and sophomores. So, uh, yeah. Where, where's your experience from? What teams have you been on? Um, I've been on FTC 11717 Circuit Breakers and uh, FRC 226 Troy awesome. Hammer Hill. Yeah, sweet. Um, so looking at, you know, having new new uh, students, new mentors coming in, that sort of thing for for you being one of the few people who have experience. How do you uh, how do you acclimate somebody into what this program is? How do you get them ready and prepared uh, to kind of hop into what is the frantic build season uh, that is rapid react this year? Yeah, we have a lot of good mentor support. We have uh, around like 15 mentors and like seven who are like actively coming in. Um, so really, the key was our training season, uh, which took place in the fall. Uh, we created a lot of slide decks and presentations. The way we run our team, we have eight subgroups for uh, business or engineering. Um, and each student has to be on one business and one engineering. So it, uh, you know, there's a lot of content thrown out of like uh, during like trading season, but uh, we try to make it as easy as possible for our new students. And uh, yeah, just like we, we try to get a lot of hands-on experience, like hands-on time for rookies this year. And yeah. So uh, we have uh, uh, some a few different slides to show off that your team's been working on for things. So let's let's dive into that and talking about how your team uh, started approaching Rapid React. I know uh, you put some analysis into uh, the game itself. So let's walk us through some what what's going on here. Yeah. So this is our uh, p put analysis, our points per unit time analysis. Um, and really, what we did this is right after we read the game manual on kickoff day, uh, we sectioned off each uh, like time period. So auto, tally up, and end game. And we uh, like labeled each action. So taxing at the beginning of auto and then like like go out climbing to mid and high rung in the uh, end game, right? And then we uh, found out what points, like how many points for each action. And then we, uh, as a team, we estimated like the completion time, right? So like taxing, we estimate like one to two seconds um, and then like 25 seconds to get to the, the transversal rung. Uh, then we kind of just, uh, then we put our uh, like game, so then it calculates the point per unit time using those two uh, points in competition or completion time. And then we uh, created our difficulty, our difficulty ring. So one is easiest, right? Taxiing, we, we knew that would be easier for us. And then uh, like nine is trans transverse or row, right? And that's the hardest. That's gonna take the most time. That's gonna take most time to build, program, design. Uh, and then we uh, figure out what's gonna give us ranking points and what's not. And then as a team, uh, we took like an hour to vote on our priority uh, levels, one through five. So for example, taxing is one, um, and then like going to the highest rung is like three or four. Greg, have you seen or used anything like this to kind of break down for teams? Like where do you, how do you find value for teams out of this? Yeah, I mean, I think this is like a really great way to approach it. Um, one of the things that you said that I actually totally agree with is, is looking at timing of things. Um, when I like to break down games, I always do it uh, based on points per second, right? Because it's if you've got a task that's worth a ton of points, but it takes a minute 
your points per second is a lot lower than if you were to like make a shot, which is only worth one point, but it only takes you one second. So I think that you using time is a really great way to, to value proposition each one of the things that you did. Um, so when you broke that down in terms of your score, so um, based on what you ranked as one and two and three, um, what did you decide is like your overall robot strategy based on your breakdown? So you have to taxi obviously in autonomous, but what are the, what is the, the overall goal of what your robot has to do in one sentence? Yeah. So like after we figured out like our priority levels, that's what we're going to put our most time into. So like during the autonomous one, we were like, can we do two, like, can we shoot two balls into the lower or upper hub? Uh, and these like these numbers allow us to get closer to that answer to deciding during our, which we'll talk about later, but like our, our decision week. Um, but yeah, this, that's like the way we, we are able to make decisions. Like, so as, as your team starts to approach into uh, the week one and, and beyond, your team started working on some prototypes uh, for things. We're going to bring one up on, on screen here. Uh, talk about uh, some of the prototypes that you have been working on, and we'll uh, take uh, maybe where some of your inspiration came from as well, too, uh, for your robot. Yeah, so as a, a rookie year team, we don't have too much material, too many materials in our in our shop, but we have a lot of wood and like P PVC and pool noodles. So we decided to throw this uh, uh, together. So this is two pool noodles, and we've powered it using two drills. Uh, and this allowed us to find the dead space, right? So as soon as we uh, intake the ball, there's a huge dead space along the, the bumper. And we're like, this is a huge issue. Like we have to have maybe like another uh, intake bar or whatnot. Um, and then also it helped us decide like what compression is going to be the best for us. Like where can we, uh, like where should our intake, like when it drops, where, where, should, it, where should it land? Like the, the whole intake geometry, which was really helpful. At what uh, at what at what week or what stage did you make this? So this is week this is a week one prototype, right? Yeah, this is like a mid week one prototype. Yeah, mid week one. All right. And then you use that that design that what you learned from that from just a pure geometry standpoint. You're not making your robot out of like PVC and pool noodles, okay. right? To to then infer to to like a CAD design or to something else or or where, how did yeah. you take that and move forward with it? So, so we did this and then we translated that into CAD, right? And we made a, a more complicated CAD design. And now we're waiting for our materials to, we put in a bill of materials and we put in an order. And now we're just waiting for those to come through. Uh, it should be like this Wednesday, I think, next Wednesday or tomorrow. And as soon as those come, we'll start uh, prototyping with like polycarbonate, actual wheels uh, and stuff like that. So that's how our, like most of, like that's the same thing with our climber. Like we have a pretty simple climber right now. And we're waiting to finish our CAD and then ordering the both material or ordering the parts for us. So take us through some of the geometry of your robot here. We just looked at some uh, CAD models that uh, you're starting to put together for things. And obviously this is still like from a week ago, right? But how did, how did all this kind of fit together um, from what we're seeing? Yeah. So for the climber, we have like, we're still like uh, dilly dallying over like two things. So on the left, uh, the blue model, that is like an angled climber. It's not completely done. This was just like very basic. Sure. Um, and, and really these these uh, these arms, these elevators would reach out to uh, translate our robot to the next rung. Um, and the, the model on the right, uh, that would really uh, start the initial climb. But now like after like some time of thinking, we're looking to uh, developing these ideas in uh, CAD and we have like certain deadline due dates for everything uh, just to expand and create more complex models. When we went back to um, where your priorities were for your team, uh, you know, the traversal rung seemed like that was a bit out of scope from what you're looking at. So where are you actually looking at climbing at this standpoint right now? Is it at the mid rung? Yeah, the mid or high rung if we if we are able to. Yeah, so so climbing is kind of our, uh, like, if we have time to do, like, we are developing, developing climbing, like, systems, but it's uh, if we have the time to right now. We're planning to, but if we can, if we're able to translate, then, yeah. How would you visualize getting to like maybe the high rung in, in that circumstance? Um, so we took we looked at uh, 254's 2013 climber, uh, very cool climber, um, and we we looked at that and the way they they were able to translate to from rung to rung or from bar to bar, um, and we we took inspiration from this and we're looking into this design and seeing how we can affect uh, implement it into our game. Uh, like 2013 was pretty different; it's very different from our game. Uh, the angles are a little different, but yeah. 
I mean, you're definitely not the only team that's taken uh, inspiration from 2013 climbers. In fact, other teams we've talked to here on the Open Alliance are, are doing the same thing as well. So I definitely think, you know, from an inspirational standpoint, it seems like you're on a good path uh, for something like that. Uh, Greg, looking at, uh, you know, w- with rookie teams coming in, uh, how do you feel that Argonauts is, is doing right now? Like what pathway, if you were to visualize rookie teams, where, where would you see this team fitting in and, and what a, maybe you would visualize for them? I mean, I, I think what you're doing is amazing, right? I think that like having a team that's that's already been around for, you know, at least nine months, if you started last spring in terms of training and getting things going, you know, being sitting here with, you know, decent CAD models running through the prototype gauntlet of, you know, the, the simple quick and dirty prototype to learn the things you need to move in CAD. Like you are on the right path. You don't, you don't need anything from me in terms of like <laughs> where you should go. But like, I, I think, I think it's really a, a great thing. Um, one of the do- nice things I love about the transition from bag to no bag that happened a couple of years ago is the ability to add on and iterate as you go. I mean, I think that the climber, especially getting to the traversal leg is an incredibly tall challenge, even for really experienced veteran teams. And so I think that, you know, starting as a simple method, which is, I think that's kind of what you inferred to is that you're starting as a very simple thing. And then you'll, you are evolve to it as the season grows is a great strategy. But I mean, I love everything you've shown me. Like this is, I wish every rookie in FRC was as put together as right. like the pathway that you're on. Um, Thank you. Um, so let's talk about uh, next steps as your, your team comes in. So you have some goals set out uh, in regards to what you want to try to accomplish by the end of this weekend. Uh, and then, so talk to me about this and then maybe uh, take me one more step beyond that as well too. What are you looking at accomplishing beyond that? Yeah. So our chat materials have come through and we're waiting for tomorrow to start building them. Uh, so chassis, we want it to be built and programmed by the end of this week. It's a little ambitious, but we think we can uh, make do of that. Our intake and shooter cat is in, in progress right, right now. Uh, it's just a lot of like figuring out like how much space we have on the robot, uh, the geometry of every like subsystem. Uh, so that should be done by Saturday. And then climber prototype, we're working on that in the shop right now. It's a little behind, uh, but we want to get that kind of like finalized. And then our cat started uh, by this Saturday as well. Um, and then after week three, week four is really going to just be uh, getting like the CAD like all implemented and done and then starting the like manufacturing and fabrication part of our, our build season. Uh, I want to take a question uh, from our live chat that's come in from Thundera Arcanis uh, asking, uh, what is your plans uh, for your team after rookie year and what advice for other rookie teams starting this year uh, for anyone like himself uh, looking to create or help create a first for box team? Like what, what type of advice do you have in regards to uh, if you want to start a rookie team and you're coming from maybe a little bit of experience to, to get something going as well? Um, so for after the season, we want to have like a detailed off season, uh, a lot of summer camps, uh, a lot of involvement with uh, our uh, robotics community in Troy. We have a lot of FTC teams uh, and then just getting our underclassmen uh, trained uh, even more a build like, the best training is build season, right? Like that's getting hands-on experience. But we want to see like maybe do like a mock build season over the summer, um, anything like that. And then I think uh, like some good advice for like any rookie teams that are starting to start is get like material done. Like you can do a, a lot online. We realized that like we meet over like Discord and that was like a big help for us. Cause like before it was like, you have to meet in person right before COVID. But now we kind of realize that we can meet in, online. And it's no big deal. So I would say like, getting materials done online and uh, like whenever you have time doing like that, that kind of stuff. Um, and then like sponsorship, like money, that's a big thing as a rookie. You need a lot of money to uh, be like, have good resources uh, like in your rookie year. So let me, let me ask you something in regards to being a Michigan team in particular is that you are, you are one of the teams where with championships now being a week eight in Houston, uh, Michigan, obviously running their state championship on a week seven event is is championships even something that's even a thought process for you uh, as, as a team in, in Michigan? Like, how do you prepare, if so, uh, to get ready for something like that when you have MSC, you know, in week seven? Yeah, you know, if we are able to qualify for MSC, that would be great. Um, and, and Houston I, well. I think you will. So that's I got a good feeling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, if, if we get to Houston, I think the travel is, is a lot um, suck because, like, like 20 minutes that way was Detroit for yeah, us, like, right. in a row. So 
it's a big change. Um, like, is it something that your team even considers for things at, like at this point? Cause you have to still plan, right? Like it's very hard to say two days before, like, okay, let's, uh, I, mean, I don't know, maybe you luck out, but like in my experience with, you know, dealing with either schools or, or just any sort of thing out of state, uh, it can be a tremendous logistical challenge or something like that. Yeah. So we, we've talked about it a little, um, our, our main focus is our robot, but you know, we want to make it like, if we get to Houston, we want to make it happen. So we'll probably like increase fundraising efforts, stuff like that. Um, yeah. And our school. Is I mean, if you, yeah. If you, if you qualify, you want to try to make it right. I think that's yeah, what, yeah. What, we're, what, for sure. what you're getting at. I, I actually have a question for you as a, as a rookie team, you know, um, you made a decision to go with a custom drivetrain versus the um, kit chassis that, that, every rookie team gets. You can't actually opt out of it as a rookie, right? So what was the the thinking that you guys made that decision? Because it is an incredible, like extra resource time and manufacturing and everything required to do something custom over the kit chassis. So I was just curious about what was your thought process in, involved in that? Yeah, so during the fall we built, um, and or during the summer we built our own kit chassis. Uh, we had one donated. And uh, we just built and played around with that, and we got used to it. Um, and it's a great, it's a great resource. It's it's a really good drivetrain. Um, but we wanted something a little faster, something a little custom, um, and something that you know gives us uh, just more modularity, right? You can do a lot more with a a uh, like a custom drivetrain. Um, so the reason we didn't go for a kit was that we had the time, and we realized that we have the resources, we have our own CNC um, to make our own gearboxes, like. It, it, and we had like the, the funding to do a custom one and we got a CAD done like week I think early week two and we we're like happy with it so we decided to go with it okay I mean it's a it's a fair there's no right or wrong answer to that it's just I you know one of the one of the things that we always like you know when I talk to rookie teams I'm always like hey approach the season very conservatively and you know generally speaking you know, you need a drivetrain to be successful on the field, right? Having a reliable drivetrain is a huge thing, but like the choice between a custom drivetrain or a kit chassis is not really the determining factor whether you're going to win or lose at an event because they're both mobility platforms. And if they're made robust, you can win with either one. So it's just kind of an interesting to sort of see that choice. Um, what kind of CNC machine do you have it in, in your shop? Uh, yeah, we have the Omeo... I can say X8800, mm -hmm. like the tabletop one. Uh, it was donated. We're really grateful to have it. Uh, we're just getting it through its paces. But yeah, I, I would actually like to expand on the kit, uh, kit drivetrain. So we were at uh, Finite Recharge in Indiana. We uh, competed as like a different number because we had we didn't do our registration. And we used the uh, the kit, kit drivetrain uh, with a, a simple climber. And it worked really well with us. Uh, we loved it. So yeah, that's kind of where our experience uh, came from that's awesome to hear well uh 8728 uh awesome to hear about your team not not you know if talking to you for things that it seems to me like you have the confidence of not what i expect from a rookie team like you, you're going in you're pounding you're doing you're doing ambitious things and i'd love to see something like that so uh i really wish your team the best of luck i know we'll be checking in with your team uh in a couple of weeks as well so i can't wait to see what your team comes up with i'm very excited to see uh what happens so Nathan, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us more about your robot thank you guys Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.